In the last part of the series, part 39, we saw Yahshua explaining the end of the age and Judgment Day. He told us many things that we should know and understand in this present day. We learned about all nations being gathered and judged. He also gave us two parables that describe faithful and wise servants, and then the wicked and lazy servants. In his word, he provides clear and precise directions and instructions for those that read and have ears to hear. The biggest part to this is again to read. But we are very close to his crucifixion. As we move along closer to this event that changed everything, he really has a lot to say about many things. He provides us with understanding so that while we were never a physical witness, we are able to know him through his word. But these next few videos will be extremely important to understand and grasp because the events that are about to happen are what makes us acceptable to the Father when we must go before him. Read these accounts on your own and study it. Make this understanding a part of you and always be a testimony of it. Yahshua took on everything for us and what we should do is love him and hail him as our king. Let's see what he has to say. Let's begin. Now it came to pass when Yahshua had finished all these sayings that he said to his disciples, you know that after two days is the Passover and the son of man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests, the scribes and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and plotted to take Yahshua by trickery and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. So the plot to kill Yahshua is now in full effect. The Pharisees tried many different things over time to try to trap Yahshua up in his words, but Yahshua handled all the attempts. They couldn't trap him in arguments, so now they plotted through trickery. Yahshua knew all that was coming to him though. It was all a part of Elohim's plan. Satan thought that he was getting the best of Yahshua, but this was always the plan of Elohim. Then Yahshua came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Yahshua, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box. He used to take what was put in it. But Yahshua said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor, you have with you always, but me, you do not have always. Then Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Okay, so we see Mary Magdalene honoring Yahshua. The anointing of his feet was an act of devotion towards him, and Yahshua approved. The anointing of oil was the first step of embalming, and whether Mary knew it or not, she was anticipating Yahshua's death. Judas was upset at her use of the oil because he only saw money wasted. He acted as if he was concerned about the poor, but he was just thinking about himself because he used to take money from the money box and he could have made money from that oil. So after this event, he went to the Pharisees and took a bribe to deliver the son of Elohim to his death. We blame Judas, but we also must understand that this was according to prophecy and had to happen. Without Judas, there would be no redemption today. It was far from a noble thing he did, but just understand, even when the devil thinks he's getting the best of Elohim, Elohim shows just how powerful he truly is. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go, and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large, furnished upper room. There, make ready. So they went and found it, just as he said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, 
he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Okay, this is the day that he was betrayed. They were celebrating Passover. This is what we know to be the Last Supper. We do this in remembrance of him. The bread is his body, which he has given for us. The cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for us. You must understand that this is extremely powerful that this happens during the time of Passover. The first Passover, the blood of the lambs was used over the doorposts of the Israelites to save them from their bondage. Then centuries later, Elohim does this over with the Messiah being the Passover lamb, which now saves us all from bondage, but not from physical oppressors, but the bondage of sin that needed to be reconciled in order to be accepted by the Father. It's remarkable how he used all of this to come together for greatness. Sometimes people take this communion and it's so watered down that they do not realize how powerful this all is. He wants us to do it in remembrance of him. But don't ever do it just out of a way of tradition, you know, because your church does it every first Sunday or something similar. Do it in remembrance of him, that he gave his body for you and he shed his blood for you so that you are able to be free from the bondage of sin. It's absolutely remarkable. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Yahshua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from Elohim and was going to Elohim, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Adonai, are you washing my feet? Yahshua answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Yahshua answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Adonai, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahshua said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and adun, and you say well, for so I am. If then your adun and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. You see, this part really just demonstrates his complete love. Yahshua loved his disciples, even though he knew that one would betray him and another would deny him and all would desert him for a time. If you personally knew all this about people close to you, would you be able to wash their feet and serve them? This man, who they were expecting to be their king, goes and begins to wash their feet. He came to serve, not to be served. Peter didn't want to accept it, and Yahshua told him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. You see, the washing of the feet was a symbol of spiritual cleaning. If Peter did not participate in this cleansing, he would not enjoy fellowship with Messiah. Yahshua was preparing them. Peter then tried to take it too far and said, Adonai, 
not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So he first tried to tell the Messiah what to do, and now he tried to dictate how it was done. Yahshua told him he did not need a bath. He only needed Yahshua to wash his feet. Yahshua's washing of all the disciples' feet not only is a model of service, but it represents the ultimate service, the forgiveness of sins. He then uses this to show the disciples that it's about service. It's not about being greater than anyone else, but about serving your brother and sister. We are blessed if we know this and do it. Yahshua continued speaking, saying, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send, receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. When Yahshua had said these things, he was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Yahshua's bosom, one of his disciples whom Yahshua loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then, leaning back on Yahshua's breast, he said to him, Adonai, who is it? Yahshua answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Yahshua said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the money box, that Yahshua said to him, Buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received a piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. Again, Judas and his betrayal were so that the scripture was able to be fulfilled. When Yahshua said that the scripture may be fulfilled, he was referring to Psalm chapter 41 verse 9, which says, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Lifting up his heel was a gesture of insult or a preparation to kick someone. Judas obviously had not done it yet, but that was his attitude at the moment. He was eating with Yahshua and the disciples, taking part of the Passover meal with the Messiah, but still ready to strike. Yahshua was now troubled. He was facing his death and betrayal by those he loved. In this part, Satan enters Judas and Judas leaves to betray him. So when he had gone out, Yahshua said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and Elohim is glorified in him. If Elohim is glorified in him, Elohim will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Adonai, where are you going? Yahshua answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Adonai, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Yahshua answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Wow. When Yahshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and Elohim is glorified in him. If Elohim is glorified in him, Elohim will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. He was saying, that he would be revealed as the divine son of Elohim and savior of the world by his death and resurrection. This is him being glorified. Elohim will be glorified in him that Elohim's love, truth, and righteousness will be revealed in what Yahshua was doing. Yahshua was announcing that he was leaving them. Peter still didn't understand, even up to this point, even though Yahshua continuously prepared and warned them of what was coming. Then Yahshua said something extremely important his new command. 
a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The command to love was new, because Joshua gave it a new standard. Moses said, love your neighbor as yourself. But now Joshua says, love as I have loved you. Joshua gave the example of love that they were always to follow. From following this command, unbelievers will recognize Joshua's disciples not by their distinctive doctrine or dramatic miracles, but by their deeds of loving one another. And this is the command given to you. We must love one another. This is why the church is so unidentifiable today. So many of us have lost our first love, like Joshua warned the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, the loveless church. We forget to love. Love is the way unbelievers will begin to understand the church. It must be shown through our love for one another. So make sure if you're a believer, you display your love as our Messiah has commanded. Don't be someone who proudly boasts on how they keep the commandments, but still does not walk in love. Yahshua ends this by showing his divinity again, by telling Peter that he was going to deny him three times. And we will soon see this. So let's stop here for now, because Yahshua has a lot more to say and explain before he is giving up. Let's take a look at what we should have learned from this part of the series. 1. The Pharisees tried many different things over time to try to trap Yahshua up in his words, but Yahshua handled all of the attempts. They couldn't trap him in arguments, so now they plotted through trickery. 2. Yahshua knew all that was coming to him. It was all part of Elohim's plan. Satan thought that he was getting the best of Yahshua, but this was all the plan of Elohim. 3. We blame Judas, but we must also understand that his action was according to prophecy and had to happen. Without Judas, there would be no redemption today. It was far from a noble thing he did, but just understand, even when the devil thinks he's getting the best of Elohim, Elohim shows just how powerful he truly is. 4. We partake in his last supper in remembrance of him. The bread is his body, which he has given for us. The cup is the blood of the new covenant, which is set for us. 5. Do it in remembrance of him that he gave his body for you, and he shed his blood for you, so that you are able to be free from the bondage of sin. 6. In the first Passover, the blood of lambs was used over the doorposts of the Israelites to save them from their bondage. Centuries later, Elohim does this over with the Messiah being the Passover lamb, which now saves us all from bondage. But not from physical oppressors, but the bondage of sin that needs to be reconciled in order to be accepted by the Father. 7. Yahshua loved his disciples, even though he knew that one would betray him and another would deny him and all would desert him for a time. 8. Yahshua's washing of all the disciples' feet not only is a model of service, but it represents the ultimate service, the forgiveness of sins. 9. The command to love was new because Yahshua gave it a new standard. Moses said, Love your neighbor as yourself. But Yahshua now says, Love as I have loved you. Yahshua gave the example of love that we are always to follow. 10. We must love one another. This is why the church is so unidentifiable today. So many of us have lost our first love, like Yahshua warned the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, the loveless church. We forget to love. So in this series, Yahshua is coming towards the major sacrifice for us all that chooses to accept it and be redeemed through him. He is our Passover lamb, and he is worthy of honor and praise. He is taken for granted by many in this world because people just truly don't understand him. They are not connected with enough truth to be changed by it. But in these next few episodes, you'll be presented with the gospel and how you can be saved. This is something you want to take seriously. The last two parts of the series, we spoke about Judgment Day and how we all will be judged. You must be reconciled to Elohim through Yahshua, and this can only happen if you know him and place him as king over your life. He must be the priority. Today, the world has wrapped up sin in a fancy package that seems harmless, fun, and inconsequential. The more you fall for that bait, the further you move away from the Father. Please be wise and be strong. Get your flesh under control and submit your life to Yahweh. 
Desire holiness and righteousness. Put away the things that make you weak and bring you down. That can be many things. You must find righteousness. Don't put it off until later. Is it easy? Of course it's not. And as you make this decision, you may see things happening in your life that at times don't seem great. You must reposition your life to be for the will of the Father and accept His plans and desires for you. I want you to be redeemed. I want you to be accepted on His day. And that only comes from submission. So make it a priority today that you will submit to Him and do just that. It will be the best decision you have ever made. Accept Yahshua the Messiah as your Savior today and live your life through him and use his words as your living guide of instructions. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share it with others. If you have not already done so, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I upload every Friday. As always, I'd like to thank all of you who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions truly are a blessing to me and allow me to continue to do this every week. I always feel extremely blessed and humbled by your support and I thank the Father for all of you and I'm thankful for your obedience to the call on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.